Hi, this is a follow-up video to my previous one, which I'll link in if you haven't seen it, the uh, Tektronix TDS 540D that I found in the dumpster. It's a four-channel 500 meg oscilloscope. It's, you know, it's almost practically 20 years old, but it's pretty schmick and it still works, but the uh, CRT in it doesn't work. So I thought we'd have a look at uh, repairing that. Oops. My... <laughs> Don't you hate it when your rubber falls out? So I thought we'd take a, a look at uh, it, try and get the uh, CRT out and get the uh, driver board out because it looks like it's a failure on the driver board in there because everything else, the main power supply and all the rest of the uh, digitally stuff works just fine. Now there's actually on the EEV blog forum, one of the uh, members on there has actually uh, posted a, a comprehensive way that you can upgrade and turn these uh, 500 series uh, TDS 500 series scopes into the TDS 700 series with the color display. So even if we're able to fix the CRT inside this, it's a monochrome only uh, display. So we can actually, by adding some extra memory inside this thing, uh, doing a few other little uh, mods in it, we can uh, hopefully upgrade it to the 700 series color. So I've ordered some chips to actually do that. They're extra video memory chips. So hopefully I'll do a follow up video on that, but we'll just look at the CRT today, see if we can get this working again. So the front panel just lifts off with a couple of clips and then we're left with the uh, just the membrane uh, keypad around here. So we'll take these screws off and we should be able to take off that front panel and then there should be some extra screws in here holding the CRT in place because obviously to get the main board out of the bottom in here, we have to take out the CRT because there's no way we can lift that board out without getting that CRT at least, you know, <laughs> at least half the way out there. Now, I've actually got two of the screws out for the CRT because you have to do that, and it's like, looks like this front display part is really, really stuck on. So you've got to try and, <laughs> got to try and prise it off. Ah, yep, double sided tape. There we go. We're in. Now I can access the CRT. Oh, doesn't that look old school? <laughs> Love it. Got to disconnect that, carefully disconnect the back connections there, and it should pull out. Neat. And it's a Clinton Electronics Corp. For those playing along at home, uh, all the electrons are going to fall out. It's upside down. Date code, 99, 10th of the 4th, 99. Well, it's next to impossible to get this board out because of the, it's just got a little L shape here at the bottom, it's really rather annoying and you can't slide out the front because there's an annoying lip there. Or maybe if you could it, you got it at the right angle. Aha! Uh -huh. I think I have to tilt it in the other orientation and the board is going to slide out. Hopefully. That's the plan. Alright, so there's the back of the PCB and one of the first things we're going to look for is dry joints because unfortunately we cannot really power this thing up and like get it working and probe it at the same time because the whole thing just doesn't go together. Maybe you could if you like, uh, you know, bodged in some power supplies and an external uh, VGA uh, input, like external, uh, sorry, VGA, external horizontal and vertical inputs and stuff like that. So the first port of call is just to check visually. So I can't do this on the camcorder screen, so... I'll get back to you. Now at first glance, everything actually looks, um, even under like a just a small magnifying glass, everything looks okay. But the line output transformer here, these are notoriously bad. So I'm going to go in here with my macro lens and, and have a look. I don't know. Does that look... See how hard it is to get a good look at these? That one looks almost dry as a dead dingo's donger. That does look a bit crusty, doesn't it? Some of the others look okay. Is that one down the bottom? Yeah. That looks a bit sus. And check it out. You can just see the gorgeous molding in here. Isn't it fantastic? And if we want to retrofit this with an LCD uh, display, you can actually buy a commercial kit uh, for this, but it's like 350 bucks for a color one. So bugger that. We can buy like a, a 640 by 480 VGA uh, color 
LCD for like, you know, 20 or 30 bucks with the VGA driver and everything. So, you know, the only thing is, is that we have to somehow fit it in there. Like we can just somehow like glue it or tape it to the front screen or something like that, perhaps. But uh, yeah, maybe like 3D print some sort of uh, bracket to go in there and hold it. I won't know that until I actually uh, like get a module in my hand and uh, try and figure it out. But yeah, there's a decent base to work from in there. Okay, I'm going to give it a very quick uh, repower up just to see if it was uh, any dry joints on the line output transformer. So here we go. And ah, I got to push the button. <laughs> Might as well do it with the real thing. Come on. Okay, just a little pro tip there helps if you actually re plug in the keyboard. Just saying. And there we go. Powering up. What are the odds? Eh, not good. It's got to be cut something else. By the way, I checked like all the diodes. I checked like the uh, ESR, the caps, and everything looked okay. And the other joints looked okay. So, I don't like our chances though, but this does take a bit to boot up. But we'll see. See if it's got the same problem as before. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yep, yep, it has. I just saw it down there. Yeah, same problem. So, wasn't that? Aw, bummer.